guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm talking about how we are storing or how I'm storing certain dried goods. You've been, many of you have actually been emailing and asking to do a certain video on alternative um, storage to a Milo bags. And especially a lot of you are actually interested in, because I always mention guys that I like to um, buy specific sources from like Lidl and Tesco's because I like to reuse the jars. So I thought incorporate that into that as well. So of course, um, guys, the Milo bags are the best way forward in terms of keeping your food long, long term. However, I totally understand, guys, with the cost of living crisis, prices of food is better now going up, but the Milo bags have also been going up in prices and they've been rather scarce. So I totally understand the need to be able to know how we can store our um, produce or our bits and bobs that we buy without really have to be spending unnecessary money on that. Because I did mention this before, guys. I did do the video about a year ago, I think, if not a little bit longer. But basically, in many cases, I suggest that if you are just starting prepping and you're only prepping for a uh, short or medium term, then don't worry really spending money, expensive money on the Milo bag. Just make sure you get your basics in your pantry first. This is just my suggestion, my opinion anyway. So without further ado, guys, let's get through a few things. And I'm going to start with the my favorite one, okay? My favorite thrifty idea of... Right, if you buy mashed potatoes, okay, you can buy the Easy Mash. This is from um, Farm Foods, but I'm pretty sure there are different brands that do that. And you know, they individually pre-packaged bags. And this is what they are, guys. And yes, believe this or not, they are already Myla bagged. And this is the beauty, okay? So what in this instance I would do, okay, I would use your uh, vacuum sealer, okay, and I'll set the oxygen or suck the air out and then I'll seal this and look at that right see the difference so yes it still be okay in this bag for a little while however uh, by just getting it vacuum sealed without any cost whatsoever we're suddenly uh, prolong that piece of uh, not piece of potato but a bag of potato for a very long time and guess what that didn't cost you anything extra apart from just making a different choice when you shop and if you know you follow I buy a big um the Maggie, I think the Maggie or no, big vacuum bag of mashed potatoes and the same thing applicable. I can suck the oxygen out and, I keep saying oxygen, I can suck the air out and basically vacuum seal them in the same bag without having to be buying a Myla bag. So this is my, my, my like top tip guys, okay, if you do stock the mashed potatoes. Right, secondly, talking about then the um, things like no soups, right, again, they are to me, they are must as a prepper, okay? And I bought a lot of them in a big jars and then I mala bag them, yes, hear me. But if you just generally just go through and you have those soups, if you buy those soups or anything in fact in the containers, right? I found this, right? The little ones I buy from Amazon, they have a card outer and believe this or not, inside it's actually a plastic pot, right, hear me? But you don't have a space to write on. It's been matted out, right? So it's a bit matte. And you've got a little square so you can write what's in it. Those things have been designed clearly for storing. Yes, you have a, you know, recyclable lid on it, but what a good idea. I appreciate there's not a lot you can put in it, it sounds like your rices and pastas. However, if you dehydrate your fruit, vegetables, herbs, even salt, it's a good idea. So don't throw them away. Peel it up and you can write on them, right? So it leads me out to the big ones when I said I bought the soups, right? Look at those buckets. They are five litre, I would believe, five litre buckets. Um, generally, if you were to buy them, they're going to cost you like about five each. When I was buying those soups, the soups were 15 quid, so it gives a five pound back in the tubs. Yes, I might like the soup, but for those tubs here, rice, pasta, put the oxygen absorber in, take the seal, and they're good to go. Another one. Yep, we all probably had this around too many of them at Christmas time, but they are absolutely brilliant, okay? Beta Roses one or any other one, right? They're plastic, they, they're plastic, they're already opaque. So again, same thing guys, kilo of rice easily goes in there, close the lid, tape it and sneak it under your kitchen plinth on the top, in your wardrobe, anywhere if you like in space. They're little kind of, um, you know, you wouldn't think there'd be rice in there if you have to hide kind of thing. It's kind of plain sight obvious, but nonetheless is guys, the size of them being narrow makes, uh, makes them be able to store it easily in some awkward places where some stuff might not be. Right, next things, again, things like, guys, say tea infusions, right, from that was from Lidl. Um, again, nice little plastic containers, you know, things with, again, from Lidl, the, um, 
the herbs and spices, the Polish seasoning stuff comes in the big ones like that. Take me a while to get through it, but when I do, I'm going to reuse that container. Be it for my mixed home salt, anything rice, I don't know, but I will be reusing them. And again, had that kicking around for ages now, I've just veggies there now. Um, again, marshmallows, look at that little tab, how cool is that? Again, it's quite sturdy, it's food grade, it already has food in it, it's absolutely no brainer. So think outside the box when you, when you buy stuff, either make your choices potentially based a little bit on um, the containers or just think outside the box and keep certain things you might not expect to be keeping. Same thing, I love that, right? It's the only one I have, I must say, but is the garlic granules, okay? <laughs> I have this in an old Coke bottle. Don't drink Coke, but for some reason it was there, or Fanta, you know, Coke. Um, anyway, I just love it. For some reason, I'm so used to using that, and I just top it up, it lives in my spice cupboard. Um, but again, it's free, it's really thick plastic, it's absolutely fine, and yeah, it will store a small amount of stuff there. The main thing, right, we're talking about, guys, is really pastas and rices that we want to be able to stock. They're the ones they really take a lot of space. And for instance, here we have, if again, if you're watching me, you know, I've been saving up those old rosy glass bottles for ages. I use them for home brewing, but at the same time, because I had so many, unfortunately, they stopped doing them now. I've put the rice in them. Although I have the wine cork in there because somebody threw away um, my lids out of a couple of them. So I put the wine cork in there and I taped them up. And believe this or not, guys, again, they're so good. Oxygen absorber in the bottom, put the rice in there, under your kitchen plinth, whatever, or just put them on the shelf. They're really, really good. The only thing is, yes, keep them in a dark place because obviously light does affect the longevity of our food. So keep it in a dark, cool place and they'll be absolutely fine. Same thing as with the bottles. If you're partial to um, whatever the drink that you drink, guys, in the plastic bottles. This is the gin and tea, G and tea bottle, <laughs> no, tonic bottle actually, from I think Asda. Um, again, they're all roughly the same, but they're actually much thicker than specific water ones. So again, it's really handy. The bugs won't eat through that. Put the oxygen absorber, tape the lid. It's really, really good. And again, if you drink specifically a lot of specific drink, it'd be even easier for you because you can just fill the whole cupboard, here, the whole shelf, lay them down, stand them up. If they're the same, they will kind of fit better together. So like here, I've got the a water one, right, from those Asda or Tesco's, they will do that. I think they're about pound 30 now, but it's a big five litre, okay? You can fit five kilos of rice in that. It's a little bit more flimsy, but by the time you put the rice in there, um, it kind of makes it a bit more rigid. And again, it works really, really well. Again, I when I brew my own uh, beers or wines, I buy the bottles purely because I can then reuse them. And in this instance here is an empty bottle and it's got the tap written on top. It's because when I finish with them, if I use them for rice, some of them, some of them I refill with the tap water and then I have them sitting there just in case, okay? Again, it's a really, really good way of doing that. Right, next thing. Um, again, things like talking about side the box, guys, is the protein powder. They normally come in the big heavy-duty Mylar bags, which you can also rinse out, providing they not have any small holes in them. But tabs like this, um, again, absolutely brilliant. I've got a few of those and every time um, my other half wants to buy, I ask him to buy one with those taps because they just i can reuse them and they're free technically right so next thing right we are talking about now the glass jars right and the ball canning jars or even the airing canning jars are currently well the cheapest one is a pound for a half a liter jar it's kind of still a lot of money especially if you just want to put the dry goods in it seal them up with a vacuum it's it just adds up guys if you want to stock a lot of something it just adds up so suggestion to you again um I've got here the mixed dehydrated vegetables, okay, and those jars are from big pickled other onions or gherkins from a local fish and chip shop. Um, I've finally boiled up like a couple of, a couple of months back and I just um, basically went in and I asked if they had some jars and she was more than happy just to give me and I walked away with five. Um, so once in a while I'll pop in again, I'll pick some up again. And yes, you can use them to pickle stuff or you can use them to store your dehydrated produce. If you want to do this long term, again, pop the oxygen absorber in there, seal the lid, okay, and happy days. This is my normal jars, guys, right? Normal jars that I use from sources. So this one here, for example, uh, was from a Heinz mayonnaise. It was reduced because I think the date was on it, but it's kind of rounder shape, so it's a little bit more convenient. It's got a wider mouth, so again, it's really good. So here I have some dehydrated apples. 
because my little one likes to snack on them. Again, they're a really, really brilliant idea. And if you're lucky enough, okay, the size of the, um, the lid, you can use your um, vacuum sealer attachment, the one that can seal the uh, bowl jars, right, if the lid is correct size. And I can also seal, vacuum seal that as well, some of them. All right, this one's from Pickles. I've got some dehydrated bananas in here. And of course, the, my piece de resistance is the, um, <laughs> my jars from the tomato sauces, okay? If you watched me dehydrating rice, which I was making the ready-made rice meals for the off-grid scenario, and I've done quite a lot of them, and I filmed that, and I showed you that, I use them to store the rice. This is a two portion, so I'll have to decanter them to basically add some hot water to it. Because I found, to be fair guys, with the space issue, all this convenience to have them, half of that filled in, and then put hot water, put the lid on, and let it cook. I found if I have an jar on my shelf, I would want it to be filled. So that's what I choose to do. So again, brilliant idea to use them for that. Small oxygen absorber, if you're thinking of keeping a really long term. Dark room, dark cupboard, dark box, whatever you have, put them in there and they'll be as good as gold. And guys, at the same time, again, some of you might feel it's a bit controversial, but um, to reuse them for either pickling or jams or anything like that. Yes, the lids have been reused, obviously, so have to be disinfected and processed correctly. However, for the jams and the high acidity foods, using those jars with those lids are absolutely fine. It's what they call like a... Um, Open kettle method, basically, when you put a really hot liquid in there, turn it upside down for five minutes, turn it back up, and it automatically will create a volume as it cools. At the same time, those jars are able to go in your hot water bath canner, so you can reuse them and they will seal. And, take my word for it, guys, they seal better than a bowl jar. They will last, outlast on the shelf, those seals. Trust me, I had the jars there sitting there, and some of them annoyingly in the wrong temperature but fluctuating temperature and they still have not popped. The only reason they pop if I dropped one, which I did, and yes of course suddenly it clicks. However, they are fine. And if you follow the correct acidity thing, then yes guys, they will work and they will seal. So this is why I'm so up for buying my little um sauces because I just fill them up with anything. And as I said I have multiples of those with a different selection of foods. So there we are guys, this is really that. It is honestly could not be any more simpler. And I know for some of you will think like, and I know there will be people that be going on about, oh my God, but think about there's all the microplastics in there. To be fair, we're preparing for, you know, some really, really tough times. So a little bit of microplastic in my bottle here are really, really least of my concerns at the moment. Because anyway, if you're worried about this, they're everywhere. Anyway, we know that. And to be fair, we've been on this planet for um, many years. And anyway, this kind of thing aside, guys, honestly, microplastic in your rice in your bottle, just don't worry about it. Just think about at the moment, think about it, making sure you've got enough food and the way you're storing it. Because if somebody said to me, well, you know, you've got some, you know, plastic, it's not really good, some microplastics in your rice, who wants to eat that? Well, if I can afford that, and I would want to be able to eat when things are happening, and then I happily just consume rice that's sat there in my bottle. Glass is always better, of course, but guys, um, needs must, okay? So don't worry about that. So I do hope you find this, at least some of you who've been asking for this kind of video, helpful. Any questions at all, please comment down below. And otherwise, I shall see you in the next video. Bye-bye.